So say you have this polynomial xn minus 1 equals to 0 over complex numbers. So this polynomial xn minus 1 has n roots and these distinct n roots are given as exponential of 2 pi i k divided by n where this i is square root of minus 1. And these n roots are given precisely for k equals to 0, 1, 2, 3 all the way to n. So you keep plugging in k here and you keep getting a different root. For k equals to 0, you always get 1 as a root. Now, these roots, they form a cyclic group. And the generator is exponential 2 pi i over n. So that is, if you plug in 1 here, you get 2 pi i by n. And that is a generator of the cyclic group of roots. So for example, if n is just 1, uh, then you will just have k as 0. So if k is 0, then you just get a uh, identity group you just have one if n is 2 then the you get as 1 and zeta 2 so you plug in k as 0 and 1 here here n is 2 so you get uh, this is generated by the zeta 2 wh where zeta 2 is exponential of 2 pi i by 2 so notice that instead of n we are putting in 2 so instead of n you are putting in 2 so zeta 2 square will again give you 1 so if n is 3 so you're going to plug in 3 here so you get uh, the zeta 3 is exponential 2 pi i over 3. This is the generator and the group is 1 zeta 3 zeta 3 square. So this could be generated either by zeta 3 or by zeta 3 square. So this is power is 1. So because this 1 and this 2 are relatively prime to 3. So this could be generated either by zeta 3 that is our standard generator which is exponential of 2 pi i by 3 where n is 3 or it could be generated by zeta 3 square because 2 is relatively prime to 3. Now say when n is 4 your group would be 1 zeta 4 zeta 4 square and zeta 4 cube where zeta 4 is exponential of 2 pi i divided by 4. So again this could be generated by our standard generator zeta 4 or it could be generated by another generator whose power is relatively prime to 4. So this so there are two generators for this group, zeta 4 and zeta 4 cube. Here also you had two generators and here you had a single generator. So notice that this is not a generator for this group because 2 divides 4. 2 is not relatively prime to 4. So this 2 here is not relatively prime to 4. So the generator of the cyclic group is called the primitive nth root of unity. So for example, this is a primitive nth root of unity and this is a primitive nth root of unity. This is not a primitive nth root of unity because this generates the group, this generates the group. This power 2 does not generate the group. So this is not the nth root of unity. So the field Q, which is rational, you adjoin your generator to it. This is called the cyclotomic field of nth roots of unity. So we are adjoining the generator. So you are adjoining this generator for the uh, nth power. So this is why we write it as zeta n. So for n equals to 4 you have zeta 4. For n equals to 3 you have subscript is 3. For n equals to 2 you have subscript 2. The nth cyclotomic polynomial is given like this. So this. You have phi of n of x is, you take the product over all primitive nth roots of unity. So x minus the primitive root. So we are not taking all roots, but only the roots which will generate the group. So for example, phi 1 of x, we write it as x minus 1 because we are talking about n equals to 1. So only 1 is there in the group. It's just a trivial group. So you just have x minus 1. Phi 2. Now this n equals to 2 has two elements 1 and zeta 2 but zeta 2 is a generator 1 square will just give you 1 this zeta square will give you 1 so this zeta 2 is a generator obviously zeta 2 is given as exponential of 2 pi i divided by 2 if you expand this out this will just be minus 1 so zeta 2 is minus 1 so you have x minus zeta 2 so x minus minus 1 will give you x plus 1 now you talk about phi 3 of x. Now you see you have two generators, this and this. So both of them come here, x minus this and x minus zeta 3 square. 
So obviously you can expand this out. You know that zeta 3 is given to you as exponential 2 pi i by 3. So you expand this out and you take square of this, plug it in, you will just get x square plus x plus 1. Now phi 4 of x, you have uh, two generators, this one and this one. So again, this is not a generator, so we are skipping this. So you have x minus zeta 4 and x minus zeta 4 cubed. So this will give you x minus i, x plus i, precisely because uh, this is i and this is minus i. This is, these are complex numbers. So this i is complex. So i here is square root of minus 1. So degree of phi of is precisely the number of integers a such that a lies between 1 and n. a is strictly less than n and these are relatively prime to n. Now this is precisely because you just take those roots whose powers are relatively prime to our n here. So if this was 4 here, you took roots which had power 1 and power 3. So 1 and 3 are relatively prime to 4. Here if you had phi of 3, you took roots whose powers are relatively prime to 3. So you took 1 here and 2 here which is relatively prime to 3. So you had 2, so power is 1 here which is relatively prime to 2. So you are taking product over uh, roots which are relatively prime to this n. That is the power of the roots is relatively prime to this number. So therefore, um, if you multiply them, so the number of such terms, if you multiply them, these powers of x's will add up, giving you precisely um, the number of integers which are relatively prime to n. So you add these up, so you will get uh, x, the power of x would be precisely the number of integers which are relatively prime to n because for every relatively prime integer you have a factor there. So this is generated as this var phi of n which is called the Euler's phi function. So that is the number of integers which are between 1 and n uh, strictly less than n which are relatively prime to n. So let us see the factorization of x4 minus 1. So this factorizes like this. So x minus 1 times x plus 1, x minus this complex i times x plus complex i. So this you can see x minus 1 is just this phi 1. So this you write as phi 1. This part here you can see is phi 4. So this you write as phi 4. This part is phi 2. So you can see this part is phi 2. Now this is important to see because uh, you know x4 minus 1 this factorizes like this x minus 1 and then you have all other roots so see uh, our roots here 1 zeta 4 zeta 4 square zeta 4 cube so we're copying all four of them right here so this x minus 1 comes right here then you take the two roots which are relatively prime to 4 so that is this and this so these two are here this gives you 4. The root which is not relatively prime to 4, which is 2, it will divide 4. So 2 divides 4 and it gives you 2. So zeta 4 square will give you 1 comma zeta 4 square. So this is a subgroup which is generated by zeta 4 square. So it just has two elements. So it has two elements. You can see which is the two element group here. This is it. So we have to put a value corresponding to this here because zeta 4 square is 1 so it does satisfy the equation x square minus 1 equals to 0 so you put this in here you will get 1 so instead of uh, so for this value you have to use this x plus 1 precisely n equals to 2 so you have minus 1 here so that is why this thing is this so you can directly compute it also zeta 4 square but now you can clearly see it from the subgroup generated. This is exactly the same as this group generated by two elements because if you put in this equation, you get uh, one. Now you can see because two divides four. Now going on further, carrying our observation further, now say x to the power of six minus one. Again, it will factorize like this, x minus one, x minus zeta six, x minus zeta six squared, x minus zeta six cubed, four, five, and so on all the five factors are there obviously this one is nothing but uh, zeta 6 to the power of 6 uh, 
because it is uh, you know raised to the power of six this will become one so we have this so again you see this becomes phi of one now take the factors which are relatively uh, prime to six you have five and uh, you have one so these two this and this these are incorporated here what about phi 2 of x so 2 divide 6 2 divide 6 giving you 3 so just like here this will be generated by a 3 group here 1 zeta 3 zeta 3 square but instead of zeta 3 you're going to write uh, here we are going to write so we have to write zeta 6 2 instead of zeta 3 because 2 divide 6 is 3 so this element and this element they they become phi 3 so again this element and this element precisely form phi 3 so obviously phi 2 is generated by this element but you can have seen it directly also uh, because you know this 3 when it divides 6 it leads to 2 so obviously this 2 means that you have to talk about this 2 subgroup so you just have this element here which is zeta 2 so, so this corresponds to phi 2 so again we are just using the generators of the element here so this process actually carries out in general so in general x n minus 1 you can write it like this product of all the phi d's where d divides n so for example for x 6 we had 1 2 3 6 so all the elements which divide 6 so that means uh, the degree here is n so this degree is n and the degree for each phi of t so this is phi of t so because we had phi of n here this is var phi of n for d dividing n so we have shown that the degree of this is var phi of n this we had shown before and this is a monic polynomial and now we have shown that uh, degree of xn minus 1 is this uh, Euler's phi function and you sum it over all devices which divide n 